Hey everyone, Sean here from Tesla Family again. If you've been following along on my Tesla solar journey, you'll know that I had my panels installed in late June 2020. Well, recently, late this fall, I've been noticing up to a 50% reduction in my solar panel production between the middle of summer and here late in fall 2020. I've also been noticing these unexpected dips in my solar production curve, and I wanted to find out why. Well, in this video, I'm going to answer two questions that may have popped up after you've been pouring over your solar production data. Question one, why the difference in production between summer and late fall? And question two, what's causing these unexplained dips in my solar production curve? Well, to dig deep into answering these questions for you, I'm gonna take you step by step through 30 minute time steps looking at the sky from the level of my panels, and these solar power snapshots of my production curve captured from my Tesla app. Come on, let's dig into the data. All right guys, here is the first question I will be answering for you in this video. Why the difference in production? I've got three snapshots from my Tesla app showing energy usage. The first one on the left here from July 14th, 2020, a nearly perfect solar production curve, middle of summertime, 45.3 kilowatt hours. Now compare that to the more recent November 29th production curve, only 22.4 kilowatt hours. That's a difference of 22.9 kilowatt hours less here in late November than from the middle of July. And there's a few dips here in the solar production curve. I wanna to try to answer those for you too. And the second question that I'll cover in the next slide, the third image here on the right is really just an overlay. I took the November curve and overlaid it with the July curve. So you can see the difference between November production and July production. And if you look in the notes here, you can see that solar noon in mid-July was around 72 degrees above the horizon, but solar noon here in late November, only 29 degrees above the horizon. That is a key player into the lower production. But I'll show you some better examples here later in the video. Here is that second question. What's causing these dips on a nearly sunny day even in November? We'll talk about that here next. Thank you to those of you who have already subscribed to Tesla Family here on YouTube. And if you're not subscribed, please help Tesla Family grow. Consider subscribing because over the last 90 days, 95% of our viewers are not subscribed. It really helps our channel grow if you can click that subscribe button. Thank you very much for considering that. So I wanted to visualize these differences in the solar elevation above the horizon between July and November. I've got a protractor here overlaid. You can see in the gold line, that that's 72 degrees above the horizon. That's solar noon in, on July 14th, 2020. Sun shining down and hitting the panels with no problem at all. Comparing that to November 29th, 2020, that more teal color line, much lower above the horizon, only 29 degrees above the horizon at solar noon. And if you have tall trees in front of your home, you'll definitely see something called shading, which will prevent a part of the solar energy from reaching your panels. So I got a snip here from the Tesla website, helping customers to understand your solar system. It says here highlighted that you will see changes in your system's production throughout the year based on the number of hours of sunlight and proximity of the sun. It is typical for your system to output 50%, only half of its rated power at noon in the winter and 80% of its rated power at noon in the summertime. What's causing the shading in my November production curve? Tree branches are causing the shading. Take a look at this satellite image here on the left. Disregard the number one areas that are shaded. It's from a lawn service company, but you can see the panels on my south and west facing roof surfaces across the street from my home, some trees. And the height of those trees really does matter here in Maryland, we do have a number of oak trees, this white oak tree being the Maryland state tree, mature tree height of 50 to 80 feet. So here's a comparison of it fully leafed out in the summertime and a picture of the oak tree with no leaves on it, a bare oak tree. You can see here that these branches will block the sun's rays from reaching your panels if these trees are in line with the sun angle. Eastern white pines, also some taller trees that could be found here in portions of Maryland, also 50 to 80 feet mature tree height. So Tesla even says here 
that while you cannot control the sun or cloudy weather, a number of other factors may be avoided to help you maximize the energy produced from your system. Shade from tree growth or routine exposure to outdoor elements resulting in dirt and debris accumulation can impact your solar energy. Further down, prevent shade on your solar panels. Shade on your solar panels can hinder electricity production. Keep trees and other tall plants trimmed to prevent shade on your solar panels. Well, I can't really do that with these trees that are across the street because I don't own those trees. All right, so I'm going to show you these really cool time steps, half hour time steps from November 29th, 2020. Again, I have a 7.56 kilowatt system. Here on the left are snapshots showing instantaneous solar power from these time steps from the Tesla app. And on the right hand side, these photos are from my GoPro mounted right at panel level looking to the south southeast 174 degrees and below the picture I'm showing you the time that the picture was taken and the snip from the app the elevation of the Sun and the solar power produced here at 7:30 in the morning just after sunrise Sun elevation only three degrees above the horizon we're not producing anything yet the Sun's still too low on the horizon 8 o'clock in the morning Sun elevation 8 degrees now we can see it here in the panoramic view coming up and there is some blockage here from this white pine across the street but we are starting to see some solar power reaching the panels 0.2 kilowatts 8:30 in the morning sun elevation up to 12 degrees we're starting to see the sun break out from behind this white pine with a clear path to my panels but there is still some blockage as you can see from solar power only 0.4 kilowatts but that production curve is sharply climbing nine o'clock in the morning sun elevation up to 17 degrees now we've broken out past this white pine tree and we're between this white pine tree and this bare oak tree across the street from my home solar power up to 2.4 kilowatts 9:30, still climbing we're up to 2.8 kilowatts but the sun you can see is starting to move behind this bare white oak tree across the street sun elevation 20 degrees moving on to 10 o'clock in the morning now we're starting to see an impact from these branches blocking some of the sun from reaching my panels solar power down to 2.2 kilowatts although the sun angle is up to 23 degrees we could see here on the left in the test lap the, the power dipping down into the bottom of the first dip here is the bottom of the first dip, 2.1 kilowatts at 10.30 in the morning. The sun is squarely behind these taller branches of this bare oak tree across the street. Now the sun is starting to move out from this first oak tree into a clearing. 11 o'clock in the morning, sun elevation up almost to the peak for the day, 28 degrees. Solar power back up to 2.8 kilowatts and climbing here on the app. 11.30 in the morning, here is our peak Sun elevation for the day, 29 degrees on November 29th, 2020. Solar power sharply rising again near solar noon, 4.1 kilowatts. Now 12 noon, sun elevation at the peak for the day, 29 degrees, solar power up to 4.7 kilowatts. You can see the sun between both of these oak trees with minimal shading occurring. 12.30 and the sun is getting behind this second taller oak tree but we're not seeing an impact of solar power yet this is the max for the day 4.8 kilowatts sun elevation still at its highest 29 degrees now at 1 p.m we're starting to see this second dip solar power down to 4.2 kilowatts and the sun is being blocked by these taller branches of this oak tree 130 sun elevation starting to drop now for the day 25 degrees solar power remaining steady however 4.2 kilowatts with the sun angle going down we're not getting quite the amount of solar energy reaching our panels but we're also here in this clearing which is probably answers why we maintained a level production between 1 and 1 30 p.m 2 p.m sun elevation still dropping 23 degrees solar power now starting to, to drop even further 3.8 kilowatts and there is another taller tree that the sun's kind of getting behind these taller branches as well but we are also losing solar power because the sun angle is dropping 230 we do have some high clouds moving in ahead of some incoming overnight rain so that is also an impact but most of the day was a sunny day sun elevation down to 19 degrees solar power now sharply dropping only 2.8 kilowatts high clouds still moving in three o'clock Sun elevation down to 16 degrees, solar power 2.2 kilowatts. 3.30, now we've really dropped. We've got a fairly continuous veil of high clouds overhead, but the sun elevation is now down to 11 degrees, pretty low on the horizon now as it dips towards sunset. Solar power down to 0.6 kilowatts. And at 4 p.m., sun elevation 7 degrees. Again, that thin veil of clouds overhead. 
we're still able to produce 0.3 kilowatts. But by 4.30, you can see, even though the sun elevation is at 2 degrees, there are a number of trees blocking the horizon, and we do not have any more solar production for the day. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and these half an hour time steps. I really think breaking it down this way was really helpful to showing you how both the sun angle and shading from trees impacts your solar production. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.